Good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. I'll just uh, quietly wait for a few people to come on. We're on time this morning. I'm not early or late, just on time. So I'll just allow a few people to come on. My phone's, my watch is playing up. Should have plugged that in. How is everyone this morning? Morning, Christy. Morning, Pearl. Got six people on, but I can only see two people watching. Facebook does these things. It is the 12th of October. It's Tuesday. Morning, Kate. It's Wilfred of Ripon, Bishop and Missionary Lesser Festival. It's Elizabeth Fry, Prison Reformers Commemoration, and Edith Cavell, who is a nurse, her commemoration. So we have three. Because it's a lesser festival, I have a little bit about um, Wilfred. So maybe we'll have a little look at him when we get to the point, that point, morning, let uh, me just go back, morning Mary, morning Christy, morning Caroline, morning Bill and Sheila, morning Marlene, welcome to morning prayer, uh, we'll just let, uh, we'll just get a couple of minutes past and then start, it's team service this Sunday, please do come along, it's at St Margaret's this time, um, and then after that we're going to start sort of trotting it round the churches as long as everything still goes according to plan we will possibly be doing coal view in um november um and then december is a tricky one we will probably not do a team service or we might i'm not quite sure yet we will see how that goes and then we'll be back in january and our team service is going to be with the Methodist Church. So we're going to go over to the Methodist Church. Um, I've been talking to the new uh, uh, minister there, Stephen, and uh, we want to re-establish the links that we've celebrated so many years uh, running over uh, joining. Uh, my first experience of you guys was over at the Methodist Church, so that would be quite nice. So we're going to be there in January on that third Sunday, so just so you know. It will also be the start of Ecumenical Week, something like that. Um, and so we all, that's the, we're kicking that off and celebrating. Morning, Kate. Right, it's two minutes past. We've got eight people on so far. I think it's time to light our candle and take a moment. I've got one match left in this box. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tempt fate now. Dear Lord, let this match light this candle, <laughs> so I don't have to disappear and get another one. <laughs> jeopardy, jeopardy. Go. Loving God, as we meet with you this morning, guide our thoughts and spirits into a closer relationship with you. May we know your presence this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Morning, Kate. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this morning, Psalm 106, it's got a little star by it. I have no clue as to why that is like that. It's a long one and it's a bit of an interesting one, but there we go. That's what we've been told to do. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do Psalm 106. Hallelujah. Give thanks to the Lord for he is gracious, for his faithfulness endures forever. Who can express the mighty acts of the Lord or show forth all his praise? Blessed are those who observe what is right and always do what is just. 
Remember me, O Lord, in favour in the favour you bear for your people. Visit me in the day of your salvation. That I may see the prosperity of your chosen and rejoice in the gladness of your people and exult with your inheritance. We have sinned like our forebears. We have done wrong and dealt wickedly. In Egypt, they did not consider your wonders nor remember the abundance of your faithful love. They rebelled against the Most High at the Red Sea. But he saved them for his name's sake, that he might make his power be known. He rebuked the sea and it was dried up. So he led them through the deep as though through the wilderness. He saved them from the adversary's hand and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. As for those that troubled them, the waters overwhelmed them. There was not one of them left. Then they believed his words and sang aloud his praise. But soon they forgot his deeds and would not wait for his counsel. A craving seized them in the wilderness and they put God to the test in the desert. He gave them their desire, but sent a wasting sickness among them. They grew jealous of Moses in the camp and of Aaron, the Holy One of the Lord. So the earth opened and swallowed up Dathan and covered the company of Abiram. A fire kindled in their company. The flame burnt up the wicked. They made a calf at Horeb and worshipped the molten image. Thus they exalted their glory. They exchanged their glory for the image of an ox that feeds on hay. They forgot God, their saviour, who had done such great things in Egypt. Wonderful deeds in the land of Ham and fearful things at the Red Sea. So he would have destroyed them. Had not Moses, his chosen, stood before him in the breach to turn away his wrath from consuming them. Then they scorned the promised land and would not believe his word, but murmured in their tents and would not heed the voice of the Lord. So he lifted up his hand against them and swore to overthrow them in the wilderness, to disperse their descendants among the nations and to scatter them throughout the lands. They joined themselves with Baal of Peel and ate sacrifices offered to the dead. They provoked him to anger with their evil deeds, and a plague broke out among them. Then Phineas stood up and interceded, and so the plague was stayed. This was counted to him for righteousness throughout all generations forever. They angered him also at the waters of Meribah, so that Moses suffered for their sake. For they so embittered his spirit that he spoke rash words with his lips. They did not destroy the peoples as the Lord had commanded them. They mingled with the nations and learned to follow their ways, so that they worshipped their idols, which became to them a snare. Their own sons and daughters they sacrificed to evil spirits. They shed innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, which they offered to the idols of Canaan, and the land was defiled with blood. Thus they polluted their actions, and in their wanton deeds went whoring after other gods. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, and he abhorred his inheritance. He gave them over to the hand of the nations, of those who hated them and ruled over them. So their enemies oppressed them, and then put them in subjugation in the, under their hand. Many a time did he deliver them, but they rebelled through their own devices and were brought down through their, own, through their wickedness. Nevertheless, he saw their adversity when he heard their lamentation. He remembered his covenant with them and relented according to the greatness of his faithful love. He made them also to be pitied by all who had taken them captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the nations, that we may give thanks to your holy name and glory in your praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting and to everlasting. And all the people say, Amen. Alleluia. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Hi Joe, welcome to morning prayer. That was Psalm 106, long and interesting. We may go back to that. If you'd like to read the Old Testament for yourself, you have a choice. You've got Maccabees, uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 6, verses 18 to 47, if you have an Apocrypha or the app. Or you can read 2 Chronicles chapter 28. We're going to go down to John chapter 13, though, beginning at verse 12. After he'd washed their feet and put on his robe and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. I am not speaking of all of you, I know whom I have chosen. But it is to fulfil the scripture. The one who ate my bread has lifted his heel against me. I tell you this now, before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe that I am he. Very truly I tell you, whoever receives one whom I send receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me here ends the reading i'm going to go up to psalm 106 it's long when we read the old testament the old testament is morning pat and ray when we read the old testament it's sometimes difficult to reconcile the God of the Old Testament with the God of the New. We tend to, when we read the New Testament, think of Jesus like a, a bit of a mate, a buddy, um, and God as a distant father. And that obviously do, um, has implications of how you've experienced an, your earthly father, or not, as the case may be. So our understanding perhaps can get a bit skewed. And here we have the uh, the psalm, The Lord Remembered His Covenant is the um, title. The Israelites, uh, the Old Testament people, were a primitive people. So writing was not something that was a... Um, something that was done every day. You didn't just pick up a book and read it. You didn't look at a history book get your understanding it was all done through word of mouth through liturgy through song like the psalms and poetry and often it would have been passed down through word of mouth and when we look at this psalm we see an account of what happened when the israelites were brought out of egypt and we see how the consequences of their actions. They're turning away from God and making false idols. And you would have thought, wouldn't you, walking through the Dead Sea, you uh, the sea on either side, you would have like gotten the... Um, gotten it and decided that this was the right God and you wouldn't have forgotten you wouldn't have gone after trading that God for one that is made of let me see and fed on hay where is it I'm just looking for where it says Just it says the image, sorry. I thought it would have said the, um, but it was gold, I think. The golden calf. And 
they they exchanged that for a object um and went whoring after other gods and again we see also that they're intermingling with other people now we have quite a ven what seems like a vengeful um uh, direct god and that's how they experience god then because of of their activities because of their primitive experiences um if if you read um leviticus and you see some of the priestly rules for while they were in the wilderness you will see that um i think that's right leviticus you will see that there were certain things that they did and didn't do um and if we read them with scientific brains and with the understanding of medicine we'll see that actually they would they would have been quite right for the people in the desert to keep them safe and healthy in the same way as when we read um, some of the epistles and we read about the context of women in leadership or of uh, same sex we must understand it in that in a similar type of context in that it was written for a specific time and people we can take information from that and apply it to how we live but not literally so that when we look at the old testament and we see a god who sends death and destruction it's not that we are experiencing the stuff of today as a vet, as as god's action for our brokenness me you know, i could be wrong i'll find out when i get to heaven but my understanding is that most of the actions are as a result of people's inhumanity to other people and inhumanity to following the original plan of God, which was just to care for the earth, to be stewards of the earth. And so we experience the earthquakes and plagues of today, mainly down to our own stupidity. And really what we're seeing here is an example of a peoples that have done exactly the same. And how easy, even with a direct contact with God, it is to forget that and go and do our own thing again. So I suppose what I'm saying is don't beat yourself up that you are failing in your intentions. We have a God whose promises are renewed every morning. And we light our candle and set our intentions every morning every morning you wake up you can set a new intention before god to try and follow better to try and do better to say sorry for the times when you didn't do it as quite as good as you had hoped our old testament god is the same as the new testament god and so in a way there is a sense that we mustn't underestimate the reverence with which we should come to God in the same way as he's not one to be feared and uh, scared of, but there is a sense of this is the creator of the world. Now, I'm not going to go down the six, seven day thing or anything like that because that's not what most of us Christians believe. Um, we understand the science and we understand uh, um, the theory of evolution and we're not in conflict with that and I can um, do some research for you if that's what you're after um, but that would be like a separate entirely study that we would do because there is um, a lot to that but just know science is not in conflict with the Bible unless we choose to try and apply it in the wrong way. Let's have a little look at Wilfred. Ooh. He's got caught in traffic. Yep, traffic's awful in Swindon. Wilfred, or Wilfrith, was born in Northumbria about the year of 633. He was educated at the Montes speak now at the monastery in lindisfarne 
but disapproved of what he judged to be their Celtic insularity. He journeyed to Canterbury and then to Rome. He spent three years at Lyon, where he admitted, where he was admitted as a monk. He was appointed abbot of Ripon and took with him the Roman monastic system and the Benedictine rule, which he immediately introduced. At the Synod of Whitby, his dominance was largely responsible for the victory of the Roman party over the Celts. And when he was elected Bishop of York, he went to Compiègne to be consecrated by 12 Frankish bishops, rather than risk any doubt of schism by being ordained by Celtic bishops. There were upsets first with Chad and then with the Archbishop Theodore of Canterbury, but the Roman authorities took his side and he was eventually restored to his see. After further disputes, he resigned the See of York and became Bishop of Hexham, spending his remaining years at Ripon. His gift to the English church was to make it more clearly a part of the church universal, but his manner and methods were not such as to draw people too close to him at a personal level. He died on this day 709 and was buried at Ripon. You know when you get somebody writing a um when somebody, when you ask you for a reference this feels like a reference it's very politically um um kind of negotiated through I, mean, I love this and it was like part of his church was the universal manner and methods but they were not such as to draw people close to him at a personal level <laughs> His manner and methods were clearly not very pastoral. There we go. And it clearly sort of fell out with a few other bishops as well. There we go. Interesting, interesting. Huh. There we are. Um, yeah. Ministry is not straightforward or easy. Ah, morning, Mary. Let's go to our responses. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Lead me in the path of your commandments, that I may see the wonders of your law. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Open my eyes, O Lord, that I may see the wonders of your law. Let's go to the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from the hands of our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, and is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. We're going to turn now to our prayers of intercession. As I always say, now is the time to ask for prayers for particular places, people that are on your hearts and minds. Um... And situations, please do um, let me know if there is anything that you would like prayer for. Uh, 
and we'll begin. Loving God, we do lift to you the needs of our world and all that is going on in it. We pray for our our natural world where there is global warming and climate change and many scientists warn that we are on the edge on the cusp of disaster we pray that the likes of cop 26 will bring world leaders together to work for the better care of our planet we pray that it would not be too late and we ask your forgiveness for any part that we have played in the exploitation of our world we pray that there would be a way forward that would restore the damage that we have done we pray that world leaders would put greed and power to one side that they would look with wisdom and that we would be willing to make those sacrifices in order to secure a future for all life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who are in our develop the developing world where there is a greater sense and less numbers calculated as to how many have lost their lives as a result of this pandemic or as a result of other disease and famine. We give thanks for aid agencies that go in offering support of medicine and education. Those that go in to rescue during natural disasters. We pray that we would be a, we would better share our medicines and wealth across our world so that no one suffers and is in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for world leaders that they would put aside personal powers greed, the greed of their governments, the wrong manipulation of their power, so that they would treat their people justly and fairly, so there would be no stealing of money and resources, that what is kept in secret would be revealed to all. Shine a light, Lord, on those who are corrupt. May we see them with wisdom, with open eyes. And may they be removed from the powers over people in this world. And be replaced with just and merciful leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we see the pandemic continue to rumble on, yet little is given as information as to how we or even other countries are doing as a result of infection rates and hospital admissions and deaths. We pray that we would still remain mindful, that we would be careful in our actions and that we would continue to behave appropriately and we are mindful too that other um, illnesses that have been kept at bay because of uh, our own intention or and isolations would now begin to run rife and on bodies whose resistance levels are not as they ought to be so we pray that we would continue to be wise, that we would wear masks where we feel it necessary, wash hands and behave appropriately to protect ourselves and others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray too for those who will have listened to 
the interim reports on how this country has handled the pandemic from the beginning. Well, we know that there is a more in-depth one to come, but this one reveals so much of what went wrong. We pray for those 150,000 families that have lost loved ones in this country. Whose upset and anger may be rekindled as a result of some of the findings and some of the actions of our government or lack of. And we do pray for the ongoing mistakes that are often made. We pray for the protection of our hospitals, for our NHS, and for care homes in particular, where it is so much harder to protect so many vulnerable in one place. We give thanks for those who work in care homes, diligently, carefully, lovingly, to these loved ones of ours. We live to you, Orchid Care Home, who have had COVID um, cases outbreak again. And we pray for all care homes, that they would be able to deal with any regular infections that spread and illnesses, along with COVID, with lessons learned and better equipment and better knowledge. We pray for all those who have been unable to visit their loved ones and still cannot. We pray for them in their pain of separation and pray there would be an end to that soon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our children and young people and all those who work in our education system, knowing that their education is still being disrupted as a result of this virus. We pray for all those that are having their vaccines. We pray that you would give teachers the wisdom and knowledge and support that they need, that you would protect them as half-term approaches. We pray too for our children and young people that they would grow in health and strength and that they would all come to know you as their personal Lord and Saviour. That their mental health as well as their educational well-being would be protected. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work with the most vulnerable in our society. We give thanks for food banks and those who volunteer, as well as those who are social workers and other support workers from our councils and from other um, providers. We lift to you, Claire, Susanna and Pete, and give thanks for the work that they do. We pray that as furlough has come to an end and as the £20 top-up fee has stopped, knowing that uh, gas prices have risen, there will be many who will struggle this winter. We do pray that there would be the right support that is needed, that is needed would be provided. and that we would be mindful as we walk past collection points. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those this day who are in need of your healing touch around our world, and particularly here, naming our loved ones before you. We pray for their healing, for the wholeness and restoration of their bodies, minds and spirits, and pray that those who suffer and your ultimate answer is to bring them home as your healing. 
that we would bear that strain. Comfort us and give us the wisdom with which we can find knowledge on how to support those whom we love. We live to you, Mark, Addie and her family, William and his family, Pauline, Linda, Stuart, Beryl, Eunice, George and Maria, Bob, John, Mary, Mary, Jordan, Wendy, John, Janet, Annette, Jim, Joe and the family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, my dad, Peter, Shane, Tilly, Jan, Linda and her family, Mary, Martina and Troudel, Andy, Catherine, Anne, Sarah, Nicholas, Martin, Pat, Jeff and Hilary, Tom, Esme, Nilva and family, Len, John and Val, Peter and Bridget, Ken, Rose, Barbara, Sylvia, Gwen, Christine, Greg, Stephanie and the family, Josie, the Curtis family, Leslie, Angie and Al. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I mean, God, we do pray for all affected, either directly or indirectly by the coronavirus, for illness, isolation or anxiety or waiting for hospital treatments. We pray that they would find relief and recovery. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are guiding our nation at this time and shaping our national policies. We pray that they would make wise and just decisions. Lord, we pray that they would have the best interests of their people at heart and guide them in trade negotiations as well as other difficult decisions of running our country. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for doctors, nurses and medical researchers around our world and particularly our own NHS. That through skill and insights, many would be restored to health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the vulnerable and for the fearful, for the gravely ill and the dying, that they may know your comfort and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are watching their loved ones suffer, those who hold bedside vigils and those who are unable to get to bedsides. May they know your comfort. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our collect for today. Almighty God, who called our forebears to the light of the gospel by preaching, by the preaching of your servant Wilfred, Help us to keep his life and labour in remembrance. To glorify your name by following the example of his zeal and perseverance. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory. For, for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us and from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Murphy's paid a visit this morning. Uh, welcome. Thank you for joining with me for morning prayer. Um, I always say it occasionally and I'll say it again uh, today. If you'd like something a little bit more straightforward, then do join the cathedral. They lead morning prayer online. If you want a bit more random ramblings and a dog appearing occasionally, then here I am. And if you want a cat, then that's on Wednesdays forward with Mark. Hi, Christine. Thank you. Oh, and thank you for the flowers. So, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and those whom you love today and always. Amen. Stay safe, stay healthy, everyone. Ramblings, dogs and cats are great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you, Pearl. Yeah, it is nice to see Murphy. Even if I do get covered in ginger hair. I will see you all tomorrow. Be blessed. I've got to do my candle. Bye, everyone. Love the dog and cat. Yeah, oh, thank you. All God's creatures. <laughs>